Hey everyone, in this video we're checking out the Morningstar MC6 Pro MIDI controller. The MC6 Pro is an updated version of Morningstar's MC6. One of the biggest upgrades is the color display, which features separate customization of the background, text, and strip color. Pretty much everything about this controller is customizable using the Morningstar editor. That includes the display, the omni ports, and the commands that you send. This video is going to be a walkthrough of how I'm using the MC6 Pro alongside my effects and within Ableton. I'm using the controller for navigation and presets, and also for getting unique real-time effects out of my pedals. Let's start with the pedals and how I have the controller set up. I'm using the 5-pin MIDI out to connect all of my 5-pin MIDI pedals, which are the Microcosm, M1, Volante, and H90. The four Omni ports connect to my quarter-inch MIDI pedals, which are Particle, Superball, Habit, and Autobit. To control Ableton, I'm using the device port. So on the home page of the MC6 Pro, I just have separate banks set up for my pedals and Ableton. On the right is MIDI clock tap tempo, which sends MIDI clock to every pedal. After pressing pedals, I'm brought to another bank that displays my effects. Let's start with the microcosm. This first page has controls for the microcosm's looper speeds. Page two has controls to toggle on and off for hold and reverse, which I've set up to be bright when on and dim when off. Let's record a loop to hear some of the looper controls. I'm sending MIDI clock from Ableton to keep the microcosm's effects and loop length in sync with Ableton. Sequencer control sends a sequence of CC values for the microcosm's looper speed. So the playback speed will sequence between half speed, normal, and double speed, all while staying in time. Onto the Red Panda particle delay. For this bank, I have a few different pitches that I can quickly jump to, and then a switch set up for the freeze control. Thank you. 
the Alexander Superball, I have a go-to preset for a filter delay and a selection of MIDI notes. The MIDI notes are for the sequencer. Here I'm sending two C's an octave apart, quantizing the sequence to octaves. Here it's being sent octaves and fifths. Now let's check out the bank for the Chase Bliss Habit. The bottom row is for more functional controls like clearing the memory, engaging the loop, and turning on scan. The top left switch is for a go-to preset for octave up double speed playback repeats. The modifier sequence switch sends a sequence to control habits modify toggle, similar to how I sent a sequence to go through Microcosm's looper speed. Let's add in a pattern trim from the M1. Both effects are receiving MIDI clock from the MC6 Pro. For the Maris Auto bit, let's start with a Bit Crusher preset. Here's another preset that sequences the pitch. The bottom left switch is to toggle on and off for the stutter hold. Here's a preset that sequences the sample rate. The filter LFO uses the MC6 Pro's CC waveform generator engine to send a triangle wave LFO to sweep the filter. The Walrus Audio M1 bank includes some go-to presets, as well as the ability to toggle MIDI clock on and off. This is useful if you want something more rhythmic like a pattern tremolo to be in time, but something like a vibrato to stay not in sync. Here's a lo-fi preset. Here's another preset for vibrato. The skip control infinitely repeats the signal.
For the Strymon Volante, let's start with a preset that uses four taps with zero feedback. Let's switch to a preset for a pattern delay. The bottom row of switches are set up to control Volante's speed switch. For the Eventide H90, the top row are presets. Here I'm adding in the double speed octave up setting from Habit. The Entanglements preset features the Ultra Tap and Tremolo Verb algorithms. The A and B switches on the MC6 Pro turn on and off each algorithm. The looper switch does a few things. It brings up the looper preset on the H90 and also switches to page two in my H90 bank, bringing up looper controls. Loop effects switch brings up page 3 in the bank, which has all of the commands for loop effects. Here I'm changing the H90's play length to 1 beat. The random start switch sends a random CC value that controls where in the loop playback begins. Filter LFO sends a triangle wave to modulate the filter. I've set up the right foot switch so that a single press stops the loop and holding down the switch empties the loop. 
onto some plugin control within Ableton. All of these switches are set up to turn on and off individual plugins. Here's Eventide's Octavox. Let's add in Eventide's H3000 band delays. Next is Ableton's Beat Repeat. I've set up the right switch to be momentary so it turns on Isotope Stutter Edit when held down and turns it off when released. The last plugin I'm controlling is Instalooper from Audio Blast. Each of the four loops can be a different playback speed and direction, and I've set up the switches to turn on and off each loop. In this example, I'm also using the filter delay preset from Superball. So there was an overview of how I'm using the Morningstar MC6 Pro in my setup. There's a ton more that you can do with this controller. This is just what works for me and how I'm using it so far. I hope this gives you an idea of how you might implement MIDI into your own setup. Thanks for watching.